to this whole business around smart manufacturing. Just for a little bit of background, so Praxair uh, is an industrial gas company, so it's not that exciting, right? We sell oxygen, hydrogen, argon. We sell molecules uh, very much, so we take air out of the air, we separate it into its components, and we sell it back to you, right? It's a, it's a great business model if you can get away with it. So, um, and it's, it, you know, it's very, uh, very much a business-to-business -business kind of operation. We feed just about any kind of a manufacturing business that you can think of, right? Heavy manufacturing, refining steel, semiconductors, et cetera. So just a few of the things that drive us, I'll talk about on this slide, and then the next slide I'll just give you some of our responses or some of our needs based on that. But one is it's a very energy intensive business. So Praxair alone will spend about a billion dollars in energy uh, in the United States alone in 2015 uh, to run our facilities. And, and that doesn't even include, we, uh, most folks don't realize it, but these companies are also very much logistics companies. We have 1,500 vehicles, 1,500 large vehicles in the US running around chewing up fuel to deliver our products. So a very energy intensive business. So anything that we can do to save electricity, to save uh, diesel, to save natural gas is very important to us. The energy marketplaces uh, uh, continue to be dynamic. Um, maybe not dy as dynamic today as they have been over the past few years, but I'm sure that will change anytime. Uh, really because <clears throat> there's really two, two parts of that. One is, you know, again, our business is very, it's very important for us to understand what those prices are going to be whether it be strategically or even in the short term, uh, we have the ability in, our, in our, many of our facilities to basically make a product stored in inventory like liquid oxygen and then truck it around and we can decide if we make it when power is cheap or when power is expensive, dep depending on what we need. Uh, and so understanding even in the short term, dynamic marketplaces is important. The other part of it is, especially in the United States, the, the electricity contracts get to be more and more creative from the utilities actually powered by the internet and communication technologies and those kinds of things. Uh, but sort of that, that creates more volatility in the marketplace. So we have many of our plants that are, that are using uh, uh, tens of megawatt hours or tens of megawatts of a power a day, and they're on a real-time market. So we don't actually know what the price of that electricity is until 15 minutes before we buy it. And so really understanding those dynamics is very important to us. Uh, it's very much viewed by our customers as a utility operation, right? In your house, you open up the sink faucet and the water comes out and you don't ask how it got there, how easy or difficult it was it to get there. And our customers view our products pretty much the same way. We open up the valve, the oxygen comes out, we don't want any problems. We expect it to be there all the time, essentially 100% reliability. And so that has a lot of impact, obviously, on our operating strategy. Uh, and finally, like all of you understand the global skill shortage, for, for us, you know, that takes a, a few different aspects, right? One, with respect to engineering talent, one of our challenges is the nature of our business, the nature of our assets is they're highly distributed. So whereas an Exxon may have a half a dozen big refineries in the U.S., we have maybe a similar capital base, but 100 smaller plants. And so you can't afford to have engineering, high-level skilled engineering talent at each of those facilities. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. And even in some of our global regions, it's very hard to get a concentration of skilled resources, right? Whether it be process engineering, control system engineering, et cetera. And so we rely a lot. So that really adds a challenge to us that we have to address. And at the plant level, of course, uh, as our plants do get more and more automated, uh, obviously that requires a different skill level than plant operators from 30 years ago, as many folks recognize. So, you know, what does smart manufacturing look like to Praxair? Uh, for those of you in the process industry, this kind of a pyramid diagram uh, is nothing surprising, and so I just wanted to highlight a few things that are important to us, right? This goes from the sensing and control level at the bottom all the way up to our, our planning systems at the top, where you're really talking about, for a, a given geography, how do we organize plant production and distribution all as one given function, and how do we optimize that and squeeze every last dollar out of it? So, you know, what are a few things that we do a lot of that not maybe everybody does in the process industries? Uh, alluding to the fact of the distributed nature of our assets, we do a lot of remote operation. So we have many facilities uh, that only have a person there, either don't have people there regularly, or only have a person there in theory, eight to five, Monday to Friday. And if, if the plant shuts down or if the plant has a problem off hours, we have a large centralized operating center uh, based out of our facility in Buffalo. 
and we are able to basically go in, diagnose what happened, and uh, uh, troubleshoot it and so forth. Uh, without anybody at the plant. Obviously, if a valve broke or some mechanical failure, then we have to dispatch somebody out to fix it. But there's a lot that we can do uh, to remotely operate these plants. And again, these aren't, they're, they're, they're bigger than refrigerators. They're not as big as refineries, but they're fairly substantial chemical process assets. Uh, assets. Related to that, at my second level, is we do a lot around automated startup. It's just one of the things that we do from a control standpoint. So these facilities, we have the ability in many of them now to completely automate the startup of that plant. So again, I don't need the operators there to start up the plant necessarily, or I don't need to find the one guy who really knows how to start the plant. But we've tried to do more and more to embed that knowledge into our control systems uh, and improve operations that way. And finally, the last thing I highlighted there was around global connectivity, right? Again, we have the ability to monitor our plants today from a centralized operating center globally, so that if I am short on process engineering resources in China or in Brazil or in, in Europe, uh, I can bring that information back to folks in the States, I can bring it back to a critical mass of people, and they can help troubleshoot those problems, improve operations, do all this kind of stuff. Um, so that's kind of where we're at today, and it's been a journey over many years, uh, but there's still obviously a lot for us to go, and you know, it's. One of the things about my job is that the, the, the underlying IT technology will continue to advance. We've talked about that already today. And so there's always new and new opportunities for us to continue to drive productivity in our plants. Whether it be improving our sensing, just, just like Jim said, there's still a lot of things that we would love to measure today and we cannot do it cost effectively and we need to get there. Uh, Cloud-based systems, we have 200 plants globally. We have a control system infrastructure, we have uh, model predictive controllers deployed on those plants. Each one is customized to that plant. If I need to upgrade that software infrastructure, how do I get that software easily deployed out to 200 facilities? Right, it's not a trivial task. And how do we drive that from being a one or two man year effort down to a one or two man month effort? And can cloud-based systems help us along that journey? Uh, and finally, common collaboration platforms. As I mentioned at the beginning, we're a utility. We're basically in the middle of this supply chain. Utility, air separation company, downstream manufacturer, and so forth. And how do we better collaborate with those companies in real time or close to real time, share data, right? So how can I get in real time what those prices are gonna be, make decisions on that, or with my customer as a partner, which we've talked about today already, how can we collaborate in those kinds of decisions? So that's kind of where we're at, and so, I'll turn it over to whoever's next. Thanks.